This is the PowerPoint presentation for Lab 2 of the Bio 191 Lab Manual at Boise State University. The topic of the week's lab is microscopes and the things that we can see through microscopes. And the first important point to make about microscopes is that students usually come to this class pretty confident in their microscope skills, thinking that they know an awful lot. The problem is that the students often don't know as much as they think that they do, and uh, teaching microscopy in lab starts to get problematic. Therefore, it would help out a whole lot if everyone can just go along for the ride and try and learn as much as possible and improve your skills. One thing we often hear from labs that follow B191 is that the students who come out of this class don't have the best skills. And we'd like to fix that this semester and would like you to help out. Thanks. Okay, the second thing to know about microscopes is that we can broadly classify them into two types. Light microscopes use lenses to focus and magnify light rays. A simple dissecting scope is really fun. It's used to study macroscopic objects that we can see with our naked eye in 3D. You can take an insect that you find outside or feathers or a leaf and look at it under high power and they start to look really, really cool. Try looking at the head of a fly under a mi uh, dissecting microscope and you'll see what I mean. A compound microscope takes two lenses combines the view and gives us a higher magnification and resolution of much smaller objects than we get with the dissecting microscope. Uh, the second broad category are electron microscopes. These use electromagnets to magnify and focus electron beams. A scanning microscope gives us a visualization of the surface of an object but a transmission microscope, a uh, scanning electron microscope, allows us a visualization through a cross-section of some very small object. Okay, there, the students need to learn for lab this week the components of a microscope. We've got a list here in red on this screen. I'm not going to go through every one of these things because you can do this on your own. You can look at the figures in the lab manual, and you'll be doing this in class. But a couple of terms that we're going to be using in the presentation, PowerPoint presentation today, are the ocular lenses, the ones by your eyeballs, the tubes that you're seeing through, the objective lenses near the slide on the microscope, and the iris diaphragm. It's funny how many students don't know what the iris diaphragm is. Okay, let's talk about that in a second. Again, I can show you a diagram of a microscope, and if you can label the parts of this microscope without my help, then you're doing pretty good. I'm not going to go through all of these because you can do it on your own. Okay, follow the presentation, look at your lab manual and figure all of these parts out. You'll do it in lab anyways. But notice in particular the ocular lens, the objective lenses, and uh, the diaphragm. Okay, there are some important skills to learn about microscopy uh, or when using a microscope. A little piece of knowledge here is the total magnification is calculated by multiplying the magnification of the ocular lens, those tubes at the top, which magnify an image by 10 power, and the three objective lenses that magnify at 4, 10, and 40 power. If you multiply 10 by 4, you get, let me see here, 40, and you can also get 100 or 400 power magnification depending on the objective lenses you're looking through. Now you will also notice on the microscopes we have in lab that there is a fourth objective lens on there. We won't be using those in lab. That's an oral immersion uh, lens. If you see your lab partner or a teammate trying to look at something through that fourth objective lens, slap them on the hand and tell them that they are not qualified to be using that expensive piece of equipment. You can take over and 
tell them that I said so. Okay, maybe not. And brightness. Brightness of the image that you are seeing changes both with your choice of the objective lens and also by adjusting the condenser and the diaphragm on the microscope. Uh, how many times does a student who is convinced they have mastered the use of a microscope come and say, I can't find anything, and it's because they either have no light or too much light shining through the lenses, okay? Figure out how to adjust the light, and you'll be two steps ahead of the other three people in your team this semester. Okay, other features of a microscope and using a microscope that will help us, uh, that are helpful to know, are the diameter of field. When you look through a microscope and you see that light circle, the distance across that field of view, uh, we can measure that, or we can calculate its size, and by knowing the diameter of the whole circle, it helps us to know the size of objects that we're looking at, whether it's an entire organism, cells of an organism, or organelles of a cells. And knowing the size of something helps you classify it or identify it or just know what the heck it is you're looking at. The area of view is uh, calculated in part using the diameter of field. Uh, it's just knowing the entire area of that circle that you're looking at. And sometimes you may want to know how many cells are there or how many organisms are there in an area of view. You want to know how sick a person is. You may want to know how many cancer cells are visible in a certain area of view or how many you know, malaria organisms are visible in a field of view. And the depth of focus. Think of the depth of focus as uh, looking through a camera lens. A lot of us have experience with camera lenses. Sometimes you look through a camera lens and everything, whether it's near or far, is in focus at the same time. Or you may adjust your depth of field so that only something that is near is in focus or something that is in the middle is in focus. The same is true with a microscope. And you'll see that the different objective lenses have different depth of focus. Okay, we'll be testing that out in lab.